In this video, I'm going to be talking about the band Erasure and how that's inspired me to create my own music and also some recent remixes that I've done for Erasure as well. Hey everyone, this is Barry, known as Cyber Monday, synthpop synthwave artist. Hope you are well. Hope you're doing well today. So, Erasure. Gosh, where do I start? I mean, look, they've got three million monthly listeners on Spotify for a start. It just says how famous they are and, and what an amazing band they are. So I'm sure you probably know this, but there's Vince Clark and there's Andy Bell. Vince Clark is originally from Depeche Mode and changed to Yazoo, then became Erasure with Andy Bell. And Andy Bell is a vocalist. They've just had so much material, amazing material that they've actually released. So, you know, it really goes from the beginning in terms of Wonderland back in 1986. And that album didn't do that well I don't believe back in the day um, I was six years old when that that came out I remember listening to Erasure in the car my parents would always play Erasure of some some album of some sort um, when, when, whenever we were driving and sometimes in the house as well so I grew up with Erasure from a very very young age and I'm still a huge fan of theirs um, they released further albums in 1987 the circus was really really interesting, very kind of upbeat. And then they had the remix album of the Two Ring Circus. Then it came to The Innocence in 1988. And, and that's when I really began to feel that they were doing some amazing music, such as A Little Respect, Ship of Fools, Yahoo, just so much. They also did quite a few covers as well. I don't know whether that was for discoverability or just because they enjoyed to do covers, probably the latter, I would imagine. It, they've just done so many albums. I mean, I remember li listening to I Say, I Say, I Say album, yeah, with my parents when I was 14 years old. And I just thought, wow, they're, they're, their music is so fresh. They've got such a lot going to them. I remember going on their... The first tour that I ever went to was an Erasure tour with my parents. And um, it was the Tank Ship... Ship Tank Balloon, one of those. You'll know which one. And um, yeah, that was an amazing gig. I've never, ever forgotten it. Forget the name, but not the tour. Um, and you know, in the 90s, the late 90s, some people really kind of got a bit turned off by Erasure, but not for me. I felt their music was just in depth and part of what they're about. I mean, Love Boat, certainly when I was working in the year 2000, wasn't the most popular of albums. But I feel that what's tribute to them is the fact that they didn't give up. They just kept carrying on because they knew their, that they had such a strong fan base and they just loved to work together. So I'm just so pleased that they've continued. You know, they did a covers album in 2003 called Other People's Songs. And um, well, not one of my favourite albums, but it was good to see, you know, what they could do. But when Nightbird came along in 2005, I was like, oh my gosh, this, this album is absolutely amazing. And likewise, in 2007, with their Light at the End of the World, was a great album as well. When it came to 2014, I was actually working in the States at the time, and The Violet Flame had just dropped. And... I was just like, I'm, I mean, I'm very passionate about dance music anyway, but this was like proper amazing erasure music. The Dead of Dead of Night was just one of my all-time favourite tracks. And you think nothing can beat what's been done in the past and then they bring out an album like this and you just think, wow, how did they do that? So they're just so super talented. Um, you know, I, I always felt if there was... Only one artist I could ever listen to, it, or one band, it would be Erasure. Because I don't think, they've got a huge back catalogue, and I don't actually think that there's a track that I really dislike. They've done so many B-sides and stuff. Particularly, some of their stuff I'm not all for, because, you know, you, you've found on some tracks, and you, you may not like others as much, but you still don't hate them. You know, there's nothing that Erasure have ever done that I've hated, to be fair. When World Be Gone came along in 2017, now Erasure have kind of discounted that album after because they knew it didn't sell very well. It's not the point, it's what the fans think. Um, I liked World Be Gone. Um, I liked um, Still It's Not Over. It was a, a very kind of inspiring track for me, a very emotional album, I think. And when World Beyond came, that was the kind of acoustic version of it 
and I wasn't a fan of World Beyond, but it was just nice to have an adaption of, of the previous album. Um, and then that continued with World Be Live. So I'm not a fan of live tracks to listen to, but on YouTube, I, I like to listen to um, Erasure Live. The Neon came out in 2020, and the Neon is such an amazing album. Again, they've, the, people said that they went back to their roots with, with their sound and stuff. For me, I didn't get that. I just I just felt it was catchy. It was a true Erasure. Um, but yeah, just, just things like Nerves of Steel, Shot of Satellite. They, they've got some great tracks in there. And again, they like to continue things. So they did a remixed album. And they did this, Day Glow. Vince Clark, during COVID, he was really bored in the studio. And he decided to take snippets of samples and create brand new tracks out of them. And you can see how many tracks I've liked out of those, the majority of them, to be fair. The Con Man is just like, a lot of these tracks come into their own form. And that's what Vince has done. Um, I'm a big fan of music NFTs. I work in music NFTs as a consultant and um, other things. And I found that these would make would have made the most perfect music NFTs because they kind of fitted that bill very much. But no, they released it as a, as a typical album via Mute Records um, this, in 2022, which is this year as I'm doing this. And it's great. A lot of fans aren't f a fan of it. They're, they're not that keen on this album. But when you realise... A lot of people were expecting it to be a brand new album, and it wasn't. It was an adaption, a take on the previous album. And that may not have been obvious by the way that it looked and the title that it was given. Um, but once you understand that, you think, yeah, this stuff's really good. Vince and Andy, incredibly talented. And Andy came into his studio to do some more vocals on top of these tracks to, to make them into true tracks. And, you know, even though quite a lot of fans didn't like them, they've had a lot of plays. So Erasure are just amazing, you know. They've, they've done a lot of B-sides. I'm, I'm not gonna go into them now. Um, I'll touch on them though, because I think that's useful. Um, they did Time, Hearts Full of Love as a, as a separate EP. And um, no, they didn't. They did that as part of the um, any EP. apologies. It's this one in 2021. So these were kind of the B-sides of the album. Um, these were fantastic tracks, if I'm completely honest, particularly the first three. It's just great that they do so much music. Their, their formula works. They love to tour. And they've, they've just done so much music. You know, people probably remember them from their ABBA remixes back in 1992, which was really cool. But things like Too Darn Heart, people wouldn't really know what that was. Um, but yeah, they're very famous for Ola Moore and uh, many of their other tracks that they've done. In fact, that then leads me on to the compilations. So they used to do these single releases, which would include all of the remixes of the singles that they're releasing, as well as B-sides as well. So they were really hard to get hold of on CD form, and they were very expensive, but it's good that they've actually released some of those out um, on digital format, in terms of streaming, I should say. Um, I can't see number five. I don't know where number five is, but it currently goes up to number eight. So that goes all the way down to Here I Go Impossible again. So if I take that, Here I Go Impossible again, that album, bear with me. Here I go. Oh, I'm not looking at albums. Am I? Let me go to albums first. I believe that was Here I Go Impossible again. No, it wasn't that one. Oh, this is testing me now. Was it Nightbird? Yeah, it was Nightbird. So they've currently got those kind of compilations up to 2005. So they've got, <laughs> if they were to continue on that journey, they've got quite a long way to go to, to feature all of those singles and B-sides. But what they also did release is they released their top 20, which actually I don't believe is a digital release. Um, their top 20 hits was, was released and then that became hits um, they did the very best kind of hits album of 20 tracks but then they released in 2009 their total pop 40 hits and I've been doing some work I'm quite a fan as you can imagine so that was like a three CD thing there was last CD was a tour and they had two discs worth of um, 40 hits I've been doing some work. I'm quite on Spotify a lot. I have their 
predicted top 60 hits here. So when they last released that, all of their 60 hits of what they typically did, down to, um, let me have a look at date added actually, that might make a bit more sense. Down to um, since then, what should be their hits? And, and I'm currently at 64 tracks. So if they were to release top 60 hits by Mute Records, which tracks would have made the cut? And there's quite a few here. Um, and yeah, I've, I've made those up to date. So I'm waiting for that to come out. I'm sure a lot of fans are, and it's easy to forget the top Erasure compilation, but I'm pretty sure it's due soon, or should be really, but it's down to mute to, to organise all of that. I've also got, I've also got um, every single track I could find that's an album, a B-side and rare, but not remixes, as one playlist on Spotify, and that's called um, Erasure Main Tracks, of which there's 282 tracks. Amazing. I haven't hearted as many as I should have done, to be completely fair. But yeah, if you wanted to check out and you're on Spotify, by all means, feel free to, to find that out. Um, let me quickly go back to the other compilations just to make sure that I've covered everything off. So go to Erasure, go to there. Because um, as you can see, I'm quite a fanatic. That was it. They released their huge compilation in 20, uh, 2019 called From Moscow to Mars. And they released it on CD only to begin with. And then what they did is they opened it up uh, via this as well for some of the CDs. So they did the live version they released, Rarities, which is really cool. See some of their original demos and and the band were quite shocked how Mute had kept all of this stuff in the vault because they did a lot of the tracks they didn't remember. Um, I mean, look, look, the audition version of Who Needs Love Like That. I mean, that's that's pretty cool to check that out. And then they also released the, the remixes CD as well. Um, I've never known a band have so many remixes. And that brings me on to the point that I produce music myself. So yeah, from, from Erasure, I started composing music from the age of, of about six, seven. Started producing on my keyboard with a cassette tape when I was eight. And I've been making music ever since, you know. And Erasure have really inspired me to, to, to continue with that journey. If you're interested in checking out my releases, I'm known as Cyber Monday, uh, synth, synth wave and synth pop material, and my influences are definitely Erasure, but as well as that, there's also uh, the Human League and Depeche Mode. Um, I've been told I sound quite similar to Phil O'Key and uh, yeah, Depeche Mode. So yeah, so I've got my own uh, music here known as Cyber Monday. There's lots of material to check out, lots of albums that I've done, but I've actually covered that on my previous video, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already, so I won't go into detail with that. And then from then, I actually did a few Erasure covers, so not too many, but I did a few. So A Long Goodbye I covered back in 2018, and I kind of parked all of that stuff really, um, but in the Back in my mind, I thought if I ever have any time, I'll do a load of Erasure remixes. And that's exactly what I've done. So I've launched them on YouTube via this, this channel that you're checking out now. So I've currently done Home, Always, Ula More, Sometimes, Am I Right, Who Needs Love Like That, I Love Saturday, Shot a Satellite, Nerves of Steel, Your Who, Your Who, I'm Losing Myself, A Long Goodbye, Man in the Moon, Love to Hate You. So all of those are readily available on YouTube. And I am getting asked a lot, are these available anywhere? Now, they are unofficial remixes. I must absolutely stress that point. Um, but I've released on Bandcamp. Um, if people join my fan club, then they will get access to download these tracks. Um, if I do get more interest, I might put the instrumentals up as well. Um, or I might do the instrumentals as an official version. But yeah, these are some of the tracks. And if I actually go back, I'm building on the Erasure Remix album too. And what happens when you join the fan club, you will actually get access to my entire back catalogue to download if you want to. And being completely honest, that is a lot of releases to check out. Um, so yeah, by all means, that might incentivize you. If you like my music, then feel free to join my um, fan club on cybermondaymusic.bandcamp.com. 
So that's cool. But I just love your Asia so much. And I'm so grateful of all of the comments and likes and subscribers that I've received on, on this YouTube channel to say, you know, that these are hardcore Eurasia fans. And I know um, that a lot of people can be very critical. So I really appreciate, you know, I'm, I'm doing this as, as, as a hobby, you know, this isn't my profession. So it's just nice to be able to, to do this. And I've, I've used a lot of AI to actually create the visuals. Um, so like Nerves of Steel, for example. Sorry, Nerves of Steel, for example. You'll see that I've used a lot of um, artificial intelligence to actually produce drag queens and, and rooms just, just to kind of go with all of the music in the background. Because I love technology and that's something else that I'm very interested in. As a sideline project, Andy released a his own kind of collaboration with um, Bas, uh, Barney and somebody else called Torsten. Um, so if you haven't checked out and you love Andy Bell, it's not for everybody, but I, I, I think it's amazing. Um, Torsten, let's see if I can find, here we are. So if I go onto Andy Bell on Spotify, you'll see all of his kind of solo stuff that he's done. He did release his own self album non-stop previously. Um, he's done a few remixes and things, but yeah, this Torsten character, very interesting. I'm not going to go into huge detail, but they've done, they've done what, three albums as well as remix albums now. So if you're interested in Andy Bell and want to check out more of his stuff that he's done, oh, four, yeah, yeah sorry, three. So The Bareback Saint, The Beautiful Libertine and Inquiritaria. So um, very LGBT focused, um, some explicit tracks and stuff. Um, but yeah, I love this project. And in fact, I was given the opportunity to do, to do an official remix for this project, which, which I did release. Um, and it was released via on vinyl as a limited edition. And it's only available on vinyl, interestingly. Let's see if I can actually find it. Um, I think what it would be under, it'll be on eBay, that's for certain. So if I go Andy Bell, Vinyl, Torsten. I wonder if the track listing's on here. Yeah, because they were so limited, you can see that the price of them is quite expensive right now um, because they sold out immediately. I think it was about, oh yeah, 500 editions. I wondered if it was 300, but no, it's actually 500 editions that were made and they sold out within days. So I actually released... See if I can find it. Yeah, Judgment. It was a B-side track, I believe. Um, and yeah, Cyber Monday Remix. So it was great to get my official, even though it wasn't Erasure, Andy Bell Remix. I was just so proud to do, to do that. It was such an amazing opportunity for me. So it's great to know that Cyber Monday has actually had an official, you know, release on, on vinyl, which is really cool. So yeah, absolutely love Andy Bell. I should also mention really that I've met Andy Bell three times in the past. Um, I bumped into him actually in, let me think about this, in Lo West Hollywood in Los Angeles. And he was super nice. He was he was in a, um, he was in a gay club and walked in there and then found he was there with his, um, with his partner, I believe at the time. And um, I had to say hi, so I did. And uh, he was super nice. And my photo taken with him. And um, just such such a great opportunity to actually meet him. And then I met him again. I think it was Birmingham Pride. Yeah, I met him there. Had my photo taken with him. And then I met him again when he was doing a live in London. Uh, um, kind of a theatre production of Torsten. And um, he was super nice to meet. And I gave him a copy of my Cyber Monday music on CD. And yeah, I've, I've got true, true respect for Andy and Vince. I've never met Vince. I'd love to meet Vince. I know he's a private guy as well. Um, but they're just so talented individuals. And long live Erasure. That's honestly what I think. So thanks for checking out this video. If you're interested in content like this, I hope I've provided some value to you. Um, please give it a subscribe and a like. It would really help out this channel. Make sure you check out my Erasure remixes if you're interested and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye.